Did you hear about the new Nami changes and you're not sure what to build on her? Well, you're in the perfect place. If you haven't seen the new Nami changes, then let me summarize. Essentially, Nami deals a lot less damage. Her W and E damage are nerfed, combined with nerfs to both Zazix Realm Spike and Imperial Mandate, which significantly reduced Nami's damage output. She also had her W healing buffed and her bounce reduction penalty reduced. As a result, Nami is moving away from her role as a relatively higher damage enchanter who aims to snowball in the early to mid game. I have been testing out enchanter builds for her, and in this video, we will go through what I believe to be a pretty effective build for Nami. For runes, I suggest taking Summon Airy, Mana Flow Band, Celeri or Transcendence and Gathering Storm with Font of Life and Revitalize and two Adaptive Force nodes and one Scaling Health node. Summon Airy is a great rune for Nami. This is primarily because casting your E on an ally will attach Airy to them which counts as shielding an ally and procs items such as Arden and Staff. Moonstone can also chain this shielding to a second ally which will spread the effects to them also. Celerity is also incredibly important as the extra movement speed helps Nami hit her bubbles but once you become more confident hitting her bubbles, you can take Transcendence which provides a lot of ability haste so that you can spam Nami's heals more. Font of Life also works great with Nami since it procs both on her Q and on her E when an ally damages an enemy. Font of Life provides more healing for allies and can lead to some clutch plays. Revitalize also ties together the build nicely with increased healing and shielding. With this rune set you may have mana issues, if you prefer to have more mana you could swap out Font of Life and Revitalize for Biscuits and Cosmic Insight as Biscuits provides you with more mana regen along with mana flow band. For itemization, there are two main build paths that I recommend. The first build path is Boots of Lucidity, Dream Maker, Echoes of Helia, Moonstone Renewer, Staff of Flowing Water, and Redemption. I would opt for this build when your team is pulling ahead and there is a lot of fighting and you are able to play Nami aggressively. An early Echoes of Helia pickup really needs to be utilized effectively by looking for trades and small fights in the early to mid game. Echoes of Helia is a good first pick for Nami. This is because it allows for a bit more kill potential and game impacts than other healing items due to the extra damage. It also synergizes really well with Nami's kit since she can easily stack the soul shards by casting her E on allies and her W bounces between enemies and allies which can both gain stacks and consume them. It really helps if Nami is able to play aggressively and use her autos to stack echoes quickly without getting punished. This build path is definitely the more riskier choice as echoes of Helia can quickly become obsolete if your team starts to fall behind and there isn't much scope to stack your abilities and there isn't much scope to get echo stacks and team fights if you are being destroyed. You may also swap out Dream Maker for Solstice Slay if you prefer the bonus health and movement speed which can help you and your allies force more engages. The second build path is Boots of Lucidity, Dream Maker, Staff of Flowing Water, Moonstone Renewer, Echoes of Helia and Redemption or Shirelia's Battle Song. This build path is a safe build for Nami that focuses on providing health for her teammates and pumping out big heals. The first point to note is you can swap out Dream Maker for Solstice Slay if you prefer. Nami procs Solstice very easily with her E, Q and R. The extra bonus health and movement speed can provide more engaged potential and excels in small fights that end quickly, for example 2v2 fights in the laning phase. Solstice also synergizes really well with Staff of Flowing Water and Nami's passive which all provide movement speed to an ally. It is very effective in pocketing a carry champion on your team. But I feel that Solstice Slay does get beaten out by Dream Maker in team fights as it has a 30 second cooldown which is huge when compared to the 8 second cooldown of Dream Maker. You are able to get almost 4 uses of Dream Maker compared to 1 of Solstice Slay. Dream Maker is good for the extra damage reduction and damage stats which synergizes well with Nami's kit. It definitely is the best choice now after the Zazix Mandate Burst Damage combo has been hard nerfed. Staff of Flowing Water is a good first item for Nami as it gives healing power and it pairs well with Nami's passive which provides movement speed to allies. The ability power is also useful for Nami and her allies to have more impact in the early game. As discussed earlier, when casting your E on an ally, Staff of Flowing Water is procced by Summon Airy, which gives Nami more ability power for the next few seconds in which she is likely to cast her heal and other abilities. Moonstone Renewer should be a core item for whatever build you choose now. It gives a big boost to her healing and makes her W heal two allies at once. I have found that Echoes and Moonstone work incredibly well together with Nami's kit. You can easily stack her Echoes, which combines really well with the additional Moonstone healing. You could opt for Moonstone Renewer first if your team is taking heavy damage and you need to heal more. 
Redemption is a really good pickup in this build as it pairs incredibly well with Moonstone to amplify the healing effect while also providing a lot of healing and shielding power in its base stats. Redemption is also strong if you have a team with a high health pool and there is lots of damage to heal up. Some situational items that are matchup dependent are Shirelia's Battle Song, which you can pick up if you need more mobility to survive or more engage potential. Ardent Sensor can be a good pickup if you have multiple auto attackers on your team or an ADC that is performing well and benefits from attack speed and on hit damage. Also, don't forget to build Oblivion Orb if the enemy team has a lot of healing or Omnivamp as you shouldn't rely on your teammates, as you know they will not build anti-heal. And of course, Mikhail's Crucible if the enemy team has a lot of crowd control abilities and you need to help your teammates survive. And finally, for the ability level up order, level her W first, then her E, and then her Q. Overall, the recent Nami changes have definitely shifted her playstyle to more of a healing enchanter, and it is best to play towards her strengths now that her damage output has been lowered significantly. I hope you guys can find some success with these builds. They have definitely been working for me in solo queue. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you have any suggestions for her. Apply the pressure. Sure. Sure. Ooh. Jesse Nelson was so talented. I mean, her voice was unique. Um, she layered well with the other girls. She sounded good with the other girls. Um, so, she definitely was talented, unfortunately. Keyword, was talented. She was great at accents. <laughs> Help. That's funny. I would just Nami ult right now. Oh, do you know what? If Samira win walls it, she win walls it. Oh no, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good at all. Maybe they just kill them anyway. Okay, Yone knock ups. Oh. Oh. Right. Let's go. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you enjoyed. Memberships are also live on my channel now. You will find the join button right next to the subscribe button. I also stream on Twitch where I mainly play League of Legends, so come along and chat to me. You can also join our Discord server. All the links you need are in the description. I'll see you guys soon.